Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? This is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. Ah, football season is upon us. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm ready. I am I am stoked. I am stoked. You can find more information about us, about the show, over at winningcureseverything.com. The first gambling picks contest of the season is up. Go over to winningcureseverything.com, click up in the football picks section. It is right there. Football picks contest, whatever it's called. I forget. Uh, but it's it's up there in the top right of the website. Go click it, enter in. We got some cool prizes from Tunica, Mississippi. And they are the ones that actually present the show. Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can find more information about them over at tunicatravel.com. Whew. I'm going to be down there uh, Friday night and Saturday night this week. And so going down, spending time at four or five of the books, just going to get a feel of everything, how everything's rolling for the season. If anything's changed, I will let you know. But you might want to go down and check it out for yourself. Tunica, Mississippi, tunicatravel.com. Yes. So join in the picks contest. If you're on YouTube, hit subscribe. Uh, it is down at the uh, description down below. Uh, so you can click the link right there. Very simple, very easy. You can also get our gambling picks, which will be up after this video is posted, etc. I'm I'm so stoked right now. I am excited. Uh, it, it is it is officially week one time. On today's show, we're talking about. Our big game previews, big game previews and picks. We're going to do things a little bit differently this year. Now, you and I talked about this. Yep. We are going to actually give spread picks and straight up picks. And we're going to keep track of it. And over at the, the gambling picks section of the site, we will have a spreadsheet up where we're going to keep track. And it'll be like a little contest between me and you. Talking about for big games? For big games. Okay. For the, for the most interesting games. Okay. So, because sometimes they're not the biggest games, but they could be the most interesting, right? Got it. So, that's our that's our plan for that. We are going to talk about more than just the five biggest games. We're going to discuss the interesting matchups. We'll probably have six of those a week. In uh, that way, it's because there's always something interesting about these, even if they're not the biggest games, right? Sometimes. Sometimes, like at UCLA Cincinnati, well, not yeah. a huge game. So, yes, but interesting. I, I completely agree with that. There's, there's going to be many of these where it's a big boy team versus a high school team, but you just want to talk about the big boy teams. Or, I mean, in this case, Cincinnati, we kind of want to no, talk about I'm, Cincinnati. I'm not, I'm not referring to that game. It, it, I'm just talking about what's going to happen this year. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and, and roll into this. We'll talk about uh, our first matchup. It is Thursday night. It is 9.15 p.m. on ESPN. It's Utah and BYU Utah is a five-point favorite. The juice is minus 110. The total is 47. It is at Lavelle Edwards Stadium in Provo, Utah. The Holy War. I'm pumped about it. Yeah, this, I mean, this is always a big game. It's it's this is kind of a nasty rivalry. Yeah. Not, I mean, not kind of. This is. It, it is nasty. Um I like Utah this year. We've talked about that. We both yeah. like them a lot. But this is a robbery game, and you're going on the road, and it's week one. I mean, this is not like throw all the record books out because they're playing at the end of the year, and it doesn't matter how your season went. We have no earthly idea. We yeah. think we have an idea of what these teams look like. We are projecting what we think their season's going to be like. Yeah. But if Utah goes up there and they get sent home with an L, that can completely change It'll derail the, entire the dynamics season. of what we think about Utah. Yeah, and it'll also change what we think about BYU. Mm, I mean, I don't, I don't, I honestly don't know that. Like, yes, if they beat Utah, it's going to give them a, a boost to start the season. But also, there's tons of emotion. How much of it is them clicking on all cylinders, and or how much of it was Utah just not being prepared for Week One? And it's just a sloppy game. It's just sometimes that stuff happens, and and really, we don't know anything about either of these teams when it's over with. I mean, that, that's a possibility of happening. Now, you're, you're 100% right. Uh, Utah has won eight straight in the series. That's right. They have won and covered their last three trips to Provo. 
Uh, the analytics have got Utah minus 8.11, so that is a good sign for Utah betters. BYU, number 74 in sacks allowed, number 81 in tackles for loss allowed in 2018. That does not bode well against a really stout I was Utah defensive yeah. line. This, this right. defensive front coming in, you cannot be weak in the trenches, man. They're going to get after you. Yeah. They're going to come. Utah, 6-2 and two last year with quarterback Tyler Huntley and running back uh, Zach Moss. Look, they averaged 32 points per game with them last year. They averaged only 24 or a little less than 24 uh, without them. You know, it, the the guy from BYU, Zach Wilson, I believe that's his name. Hopefully I got that right. Yep. Uh, so Zach Wilson, he is Richard Johnson from the Banner Society, called him the Mormon Manziel. And he is fascinating to watch. And their offense absolutely took off when he came in last year to replace Tanner Mangum. Now, I'm all about it. Like, I, I think this is going to be a really good game. It, you know, Zach Wilson, maybe a little bit of an injury problem. They're saying he looks good at practice. Well, it's week one, man. I mean, if you're not healthy today, yeah, you're not going to be healthy that's, this season. That's the deal, right? He, They're saying he looks good, but he has not been hit yet. And once you get driven into that turf, things might change a little bit. So... I, I will. My spread pick on this is Utah minus five. Of course, I've got Utah straight up with that. Who are you rolling with Utah on this? Yeah, if, if we're gonna if we're gonna have to give a pick on these big games, I'm 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 gonna go Utah and I'd, I'd lay the points. Yeah, three three in a row they've gone to Provo covered. I, I, at some point in time, all trends come to an end. I just think Utah's really really good, and I just I think they're really well coached. Yeah. I mean, I, I like the better quarterback team and the better coach team usually, and I think that's what we're going to get here. I'm okay with that. Also, stout defense, hard-nosed, tough team. Of course, BYU is going to come with some guys. I mean, BYU's players are usually big, athletic. They don't, you know, they don't get 20, pushed around. 27, 28 years old. Quite a bit older, more experienced. Yeah. Um, and, and they play um, – they, they don't tend to make a lot of mistakes because of that. They're, you know, they're not young and inexperienced, even if they haven't had a lot of reps. Yeah, it's not going to be easy, but a field goal I'm okay with. I mean, yeah. a, touch, a touchdown I'm okay with. So I'd lay the five. Let's go ahead and move into the next one. Ole Miss at Memphis. Memphis a five and a half point favorite. The juice is minus one ten on that. The total right now is what sixty eight. I wrote it down as sixty seven and a half, but that was this morning. Give me two seconds. Keep talking. So I believe it's sixty eight. Um, so I got 68. Yep, right. So it's 11 a.m. on ABC at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. Ole Miss, number 121 in total defense last year, number 113 in scoring defense. Memphis, number 89 in total defense, number 94 in scoring defense. Uh, I think these new defensive coordinators for each team, Adam Fuller from Memphis, who came over from Marshall, they were a top 25 defense. Uh, and then the new Ole Miss defensive coordinator, Mike McIntyre, former Colorado coach, who is known as a defensive guy. Yep. It's still going to take some time for them to understand their personnel and see what they do best, et cetera, right? Like, you've only got so many, pra what is it, 15 practices yeah. in the fall. I think it's going to take a little bit of time. Both of these offensive minds, Mike Norvell and Rich Rod, I think are going to put on a show. I agree with that. Um, I, tell me this. I, one, can Memphis be as explosive Without Daryl Henderson and Tony Pollard, well, yeah, because I think I think Memphis has gotten Norvell has gotten them to a point where, at the skill positions, they're just churning out dudes. Yeah, I mean they lost a couple of wide receivers, they replaced them with some stud running backs that ended up going into the league. I, I couldn't tell you who it's going to be this year, but somebody's going to the NFL from the skill position at Memphis this year. It's just it's just where they've gotten. Mike Norvell knows what he's yeah, doing. Probably, he's getting, probably the wide receiver Moxie. I would imagine. Yes, he's, he's getting he's, he's getting beast. talent. Um, and you know, are they power five loaded talent? No, but they're they're good enough to win the way they win and play the way they play. Here's the thing: you read off stats about Ole Miss from last year. I, you can take everything you know about Ole Miss from last year and throw it in the garbage. Yeah, they lost way too many people, and they've turned over so much of the coaching staff. To pretend like we have any clue about what they're going to look like yeah. is just wrong. It's just wrong. Um, 
And they lost the most talented members of their team. Oh, absolutely. Really? Well, that's what everybody loses. You, well, you, you it, rarely lose the crappiest players on yeah, your but, team. Yeah, but typically some teams like Memphis has replaced players with better talent, like better recruiting talent anyway. Okay. Ole Miss has taken a step back over the last two, three years. Well, yeah, the, the sanctions. Because of the sanctions. I was going to say, the sanctions have hurt them, and, and they this is the full brunt of all of the sanctions have been it, felt now. Talent-wise, this is the closest that Memphis and Ole Miss have been in a That's right. very long time. That's right. I love the Ole Miss coaching hires. I love the idea that they went out and got two head coaches that were exceptional um, coordinators and or in Rich Rods, I mean, he hasn't been a coordinator in a long time, but he's been a really good offensive mind and head coach for a long time. Mike McIntyre, uh, I, I think I think there's a chance if they had the talent, this, this Ole Miss team could shock people. Are they going to shock this game? I got, I'm got. i going with Memphis, covering the points, going with Memphis, winning the game. That's exactly what I've got. I've got and, Memphis And it's only because I think half. Memphis has an opportunity to have a really special season. And, and they can't get that really special season. Oh, they lose this game without everything this about what we thought they could do this year is gone. Yeah. Now, that that does bring up a very interesting question, right? It, does Memphis stand to lose more by losing this game than Ole Miss oh, does? Oh, 100%. Because I, I, think I think Ole Miss doesn't have that many winnable nope. games. For, I, so, Ole Miss, this, if, if Matt Luke wants to keep his job... He needs to win this game. Yeah, but I don't – for a program, for what the expectations are this season, not in the future, not whatever, Okay. this calendar year, the schedule that they got before them, Memphis has a chance to play New Year's Six football. Yeah. Ole Miss does not. Therefore, yeah. they have far more to lose by losing this game. Okay. And if Ole Miss loses it, they're not even favored to win. Now, I know they're the Power Five team playing the Group of Five team, but it doesn't matter. Memphis has recruited better, and, and a lot of that's because Ole Miss has been handcuffed with the sanctions and all this other stuff, but it's just one of those things where Memphis is seen as the better team to begin with. Yeah. So just with that and what they have before them, not having to play Central Florida on the schedule and, and hopefully just having to play them one time in a championship game, and, and if they can – if that's they if can, they even get there. Well, that's right? what I'm saying. They, they have the opportunity to have a special season. Nobody in the world believes Ole Miss has a chance to be special unless they win this game, pull off a couple other W's, and get a bowl game, which would be huge for Ole Miss. But yeah, for right now, yeah. It's, diff it's different levels of special. Yes. No, you're right. All right, moving on. Northwestern at Stanford. Stanford a 6.5-point favorite. The Jews is minus 110 as well on that one. Total 47 and a half, kind of a low total. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I would expect that. that. With, I totally expect yeah. that with these two teams. 3 p.m. on Fox at Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto. That Northwestern 12 and 1 against the spread as a true road underdog the last four seasons. Stanford secondary, suspect at best. Um, I, it, it, this all depends to me on who is playing quarterback for Northwestern. And I don't believe they have announced yet. I, they have I, have, not. I have to believe that it's going to be Hunter Johnson. You know, it, but we've seen guys transfer that are highly regarded that don't win the job when they get to the new place. That's right. You know, obviously uh, Trent Green's son is the the other quarterback, and he has been at Northwestern. He understands the system. He he gets it, and he could be the Clayton Thorson. He could be pretty good, and we just don't know. That's right. Um, look, look, last I, year... Either one that plays, I think, has a good chance to knock off Stanford because I don't... I, this team feels a little softer than most David Shaw teams. I would take Pat Fitzgerald over David Shaw right now. I would take the the skilled position players at Northwestern, and I would take the defense at Northwestern. I think there are three major important areas where I would take Northwestern over um, Stanford. Could be wrong on that, but I really, really, really like Northwestern. I'm not worried about this game being on the road because there'll be all of 600 people watching this game from Stanford <laughs> Stadium, um, and and there just won't there won't be any kind of real home field advantage craziness. School hasn't started out there yet, and and just they're just not a football school. Um, I, but I'm going to tell you, 
the weakest area for Northwestern last year, highly documented by people who follow Northwestern, was their offensive line. There's there's no arguing that. Yeah. That is without question their most improved area. And everything you reach is that's nothing that they're afraid of at all. They're going to be aggressive. They're going to attack people. Um, Isaiah Bowser is ba- going to Bowser, be Bowser is going to be back. I trust him. Um, and, I, and I'm with you in the sense that I don't know that it matters who plays quarterback. And I know it sounds crazy. I trust Pat. Yeah. I just do. I think Fitz knows what he's doing. He's been around for a long time. And, and I mean, there's a reason, guys, that – Owners that that own teams on Sundays were were calling him to see if he was interested in yeah. Sunday jobs, and he loves Northwestern. I I just trust this guy in especially in big games where they always mess up is when your Akron's come to town. Next week they play UNLV after yeah. this game. Yeah, they they, they don't play over. They there. might like, fall asleep in that game. Yeah, it won't be week one. At Stanford. No, I, I think you're probably right. Another interesting side note about this is that, you know, K.J. Costello, quarterback for Stanford, loses his best weapon. That's right. Right? And it, when quarterbacks lose their go-to guy, it can take a little while to find the guy that they trust on the field. Because it's all about trust, and we talked about it earlier, you don't get enough reps. There's not enough practices yeah. to actually – Build, build that, that camaraderie, build now, that chemistry. Some of them do it in the off season, and they and they do it during voluntary workouts and whatever. But with no JJ Arcega Whiteside, I'm curious who is going to be the guy to step up. And I don't know if you can get that in game one. Well, and think about what you're losing in Whiteside, and is there anybody even on the roster that is him? Because that guy was physically yeah. just overwhelming for people. And if you don't have somebody that has that sc- that that size, excuse me. And that skill set yeah. on the roster, you can't just magically make that appear. Chemistry doesn't, A, chemistry has nothing to do with being big, tall, and fast and yeah. just overbearing over people. No, you're, White you're side was that. Right. So, uh, I've got Northwestern plus six and a half. I've got them straight up. I got Northwestern plus six and a half. I got Moneyline plus 205. That's, we, are, we are rolling it, it, with the same picks here. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll see if we can maybe change that up. Oregon, plus three and a half against Auburn. The juice is 115 for Oregon. It's minus 105 for Auburn. The total is 55 and a half. That's actually come down a little bit. Uh, 6.30 p.m. on ABC Saturday night. It's at AT AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Mario Cristobal has built an SEC offensive line. He brought in a, a top seven recruiting class. He And, of course, they've actually been building up they're recruiting over the last however many years anyway. Look, Cristobal understands how Auburn works. He was at Alabama for four years before he went to Oregon. He's been at Oregon for two years. He gets how Gus Malzahn runs a team. He gets a Gus Malzahn offense. He has brought in some edge rushers. He's brought in really good linebackers. I think this ends up being a really close game. I... I know that you're going the opposite way on this. We've talked about it. Yep. Tell me the other side of the equation. So I trust Malzahn to put points on the board. Okay. I I think he's a really good coach. I think he knows what he's doing. I think he's got a five-star, all-world, true freshman coming in to play quarterback. Everybody else starts a five-star true freshman. No one has any questions. I don't know why you have questions about this one other than the fact that the uniform he wears. And then on the other side, where this game is going to be won and lost, it's not going to be when Oregon's on defense and Auburn's on offense. That That's not it. No, it's, it's it, Auburn it is, on defense. It is going to be Oregon's offensive line that might be the best in the country, and they're up there. It, they're at least going to be top five, top ten offensive lines in the league. Yeah. And Auburn's front, okay? And 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 I trust – see, Oregon's been bringing these guys in, but, but they're not seasoned. They're not battle-tested. They don't go up against the biggest and best defensive rushes – week in and week out. Auburn's front, Derrick Brown, Marlon Davidson, Nick Coe, they go up against big offensive lines every week in the SEC. Okay. They're not yep. they're not afraid of going up against a top five, top ten offensive line. They do it all the time. I do wonder if all of the And that's where this game's gonna be won. I wonder that if all trench the hype, right there. Right. All of the 
the Pac-12 can't hang with the SEC. All this, I mean, because Auburn played pretty poorly last year and beat a pretty good Washington team, right? I wonder how different it is with, you know, it, I will say that Justin Herbert is a significantly better quarterback than Jake Browning. No, no question. Um, I think the running backs are equal. I think, you know, Gaskin, while he was great for Washington, I do think that the guys that Oregon brings are pretty good. I don't think Washington's offensive line was as good. I I feel like... But you're like, comparing Auburn's defensive line last year, which all these guys were on, to this year, which they're a year more mature, bigger, stronger, faster. I mean, they, they didn't just sit at home in the offseason and eat pizza and get Well, sued. great, but I, I also feel the same way about Oregon's offensive line, who, remember, Oregon returns all 11 starters on offense. Yeah. Like, this is a seasoned team. That's right. This is a team that went up against multiple top 15 defenses last year and performed well. So, no, it wasn't Auburn's defense, but, I, you know, I, I'll, I'll read you a stat. Okay. Auburn was number 33 in the country against the run last year. Oregon was number 34. Like, they're right there. And that's that's yards per rush. That's not like total rushing yards, whatever. But but here's the issue is the running backs Auburn went up against were at Georgia, Alabama, <laughs> LSU, <laughs> A&M. The, some of the best running backs in the yeah. country. Name the, name the unbelievable running backs in the Pac-12 that Oregon played. The, the only one would be Miles Gaskin. Patrick Laird at Cal, eh? Okay. Um, All right. I mean, I I, I got. Nothing. And what other great nothing. offensive lines were there to to create those those runs and and, and, and I, the I other mean, defenses they play? You've got a valid. I point. just I just think the, the reason a, a ho hum Auburn team beat the best Pac-12 team that they had to offer last year was because just the talent difference is just different. Yeah, it's different. Oregon could absolutely win this game. I am not poo poo in the Pac-12. I have one of the Pac-12s in my top four, Final Four at the end of the season. I, I, like I think they're going to be a better conference. I don't discount and discredit Auburn yet. They come in, they lose this. Now I I think I made this note, and I think this matters. This game matters more to the Pac-12 as a whole, but it matters more to Auburn as an individual. If Oregon loses yeah. this game, nah, they're supposed to lose this game. Pac-12 is not as good. If they lose this game, the Pac-12 gets another black eye. It hurts. It hurts the group as a whole. It diminishes what they're trying to do, which is saying, "Hey, we're still one of the big boys. Please don't forget us when it comes to the Final Four. Auburn, on the other hand, they lose this game. Eh, it, it's it's a blip to the SEC. But, but at the not, end of the day, yeah, it, it's a soul crusher to Auburn. Yeah, because it immediately starts what is already. A rocky situation in in the coaching seat, starting off really bad. Yeah, all right. So I'm I'm assuming you're taking. Auburn I am taking minus Auburn three minus the three and a half. Okay, minus the three and a half. All right. Moving on, our last uh, quote unquote big game is on Sunday. Houston at Oklahoma. Oklahoma currently what minus twenty four. Twenty four. Let's see. I had it at twenty. It was twenty two and a half this morning. And it, it, it was it's, 24. It's 23 and a half or 24 everywhere right now. All right, what are we, we record this on Tuesday. Let's do 20. Let's do 24. Let's make That's, it around. Whatever you want to make it. Um, all right, so 24. The total, 82 and a half. Time, 6.30 p.m. on ABC Sunday night. It's going to be, at, this will be watched. Yes. But th- there will be fireworks. Memorial Stadium in Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, you got Dana Holgerson. You got Lincoln Riley, you got De'Eric King, you got Jalen Hurts, you got two defenses that could not stop a cold last year. I've and I have read looking up different stuff for this team, this game. Everything's like oh, much improved Oklahoma defense. Yeah, much until, improved until Oklahoma they lost defense. Trey Norwood a couple of weeks ago. And it's just like, well, no, these these were articles that were written today. These are articles that were written yesterday. Like, don't get me wrong. And, Alex the, Grinch is a fantastic the, coordinator. The word "improved" I used it earlier when talking about Northwestern. The word "improved" is a little misleading. Maybe they are much improved because they were just so drastically bad last year. I don't know that they were so bad last year that they're going to be considered much improved this year. In Houston, 
I, 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 yeah, I definitely think they're going backwards. Yeah. They lost well, Houston, an all-world player. Well, but they, they didn't have really anybody else was, around he him. He was hurt the last six games of the year. Well, they, well, so, they didn't have anybody around him anyway. Yeah, because everybody was hurt last year. Yes. So, it, it, but even if they weren't and hurt, Dana I don't know. Dana does not care about the defensive side of the ball. No, he, no. The reason he's not at West Virginia right now is because the, the administration and the boosters were just sick of him not caring about the other side of the ball. Yeah, he wanted to put up points, and he did. And he's going and, to with this team. I'm going to tell you that yeah. right now. Yeah, I think uh, I think you're probably right. Um, how is there a chance that this Oklahoma offense kind of disappoints a little bit coming out of the gate? It absolutely is a chance. I don't know that it's going to happen. I'm not saying that it's more than likely going to happen. But if you're saying there's a chance. I don't think it's a million to one. I, mean, I don't you, think you it's lose, zero. You lose four NFL guys from that offensive line. And and we don't know what kind of Jalen Hurts we're going to get. Yeah. Now, this is the best offensive mind Jalen's had to work with. So, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's not question. And, I thought yes. you said offensive line. I was nope. like, mind, mind. Yeah. In, in Lincoln Riley. No, you're, you're right. That, I mean, that Jalen's had and to work with. He's got CeeDee Lamb. That's you right. know, he's, well, and the skilled players around him are just going to. He didn't hurt for skill players at Alabama. He's not hurting for him in Oklahoma. Oklahoma's right. going to be far more talented. There's and a the, reason the that schedule. it's almost plus a thousand in the money line yeah. for Houston to win this game. It's a crazy long shot. Yeah, I I agree with you. As far as picks go, I'm going to go with Oklahoma to win straight up. I I like Houston to cover the 24. I liked Houston to cover the 22. I'm damn sure taking the 24. And I I'm not making a pick on the upset here. You're thinking about it, aren't you? I'm going to have money line bet because the money line's too big. I'm going to put my – you give me plus – right now it's plus 950 is what is what it is. Oh. One second. Boom, boom. Plus 1150. Plus 1150. You give me plus 1150? Yeah, I'm going to put some money on that. Yeah. Okay. But, okay. but in a game where we're just picking – like if I hit it, do I only get one win? In our little competition, or yeah. do I get plus eleven fifty win? Uh, well, that's and a, if you that's hit yours, question. are you getting minus eighteen hundred for that win? No. It, it, so this, if if a win is just a win, then with our, with our then why game, would I ever take a dog in the picking the money line and picking I mean, you the got a, You got a point. So make sure and watch our gambling picks segment <laughs> because. That video, we will actually be discussing. We're we're workshopping money. this. You guys are catching us on week one. Yes, and we're trying to do something a little different. And these are questions that we didn't know how they were going to play out until we got here. That's it. see, I thought that we were going to run with the like for the big game picks. It was just a percentage, I, but we can change that. But hang on. But if that's the case, then it doesn't matter. You're just never really going to pick much of an upset. Yeah, I mean, because you, you if, it gives you no. If if there's going to be a level of competition, then there's, there's, then no, there's juice. no benefit. Yeah, there's to no ever picking other the than, dog, which I mean, kills me because all I do is pick dogs. I mean that that does make sense. That so does you, make it sense. gives you and you and you love chalk. You 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 married to chalk. You you just spend your life around chalk. I just and I, therefore you out have of, a out of massive five games. You I've have picked a, three you have underdogs. A, you have a massive spread. advantage. I'm talking about wins and losses. I ain't talking about spread now. <laughs> That you have a massive advantage. No, okay, you got a you got a valid point. Give me Houston, shock the world. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm going. I'm gonna have some money on them. Yep, Houston, straight up. All right. You give we'll, me plus we'll eleven fifty. That. That's it. we we do need to. Wait, maybe we'll change it up for next week. We'll we'll keep up with these. We'll I'll work, keep track of the numbers. It's a, it's a work in progress here. Make make sure you go over to winningcureseverything.com slash gambling dash picks. You can keep up with it there. This should be a fun contest. I've already had. However, this algorithm is going to work out. I'm quite certain it's going to be skewed in one guy's favor. <laughs> he put all now. With with that being said, you do do all the work to make all this well, happen, and, and I just show up and give you picks. The, so, the gambling picks. So if somebody was going to finagle the numbers, then yeah, the gambling that's fine. pick side of this. He is a Bama uh, fan. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. I get it. Hey, whatever you got to do to win. I, I, all right. I, I, so long as it's within the rules. And the rules are, so long as you don't get caught. I make the rules, and so that's all I'm I, saying. That's it. All right, so let's uh, let's run through the interesting matchups really quickly to end this thing out. There are a couple of interesting ones: Boise State, Florida State. Florida State minus five and a half. It's in Jacksonville. We didn't know what to do with this game. 
Now, uh, Boise starting a freshman quarterback, but Boise still feels like the more stable team, right? Oh, um, no, that doesn't feel like it. Stability and good are different. Yeah. They're definitely the more stable team. Florida State's offense under Kendall Bryles, what does this look like? We what have is, high expectations. Yes, uh, but also, you know, he brought his own offensive line guy with him. What what can they turn this team into? Like, they've got talent for days, right? They should. Like, they well, should. T- we, t- we assume that. I don't... I don't in, well, hold on. In the, I don't know that. In the blue chip ratio thing that, uh, that okay. Bud Elliott put together at the Banner yeah. Society, Florida State has a better blue chip ratio than Clemson. Now, that doesn't mean that they can develop them as well, but as far as just incoming talent, right? Because we've talked it about it. It seems like somebody monkeying with numbers. Well, they, But this is all... Straight up through two four seven sports, right? This is when they somebody come had into, to make an algorithm, right? This, yeah, when they come into the school, that is what this looks like. So, yeah, we. Either way, Florida State has, they've got talent, and they've got more talent than Boise State. Yes, um, that is not debatable. And and while I would want to, like I do want to pick Boise here, but man, it just feels really weird that this number has not moved. Lower. What is it? Five and a half. It's five and a half. Yeah. See, it, it it hasn't moved. Holy crap! You get like no money line, plus one eighty if you took Boise State. Yeah. See, so that's it. It just there's hey, something that tells me that Vegas thinks Boise is an absolute live dog in this thing. Agreed, but with the spread and the amount of money that was coming in on the spread, for it not to be moving down, that's what surprised me. Uh, you pulling up Vegas Insider? Yep, I got it. You keep keep giving me your stuff. So the the number of tickets that are on Boise was really surprising to me. Um, I don't know. I I think I think big things from Kendall Bryles. I think that this offense can really put up some points because their skill talent is ridiculous. The issue is is James Blackman going to have time? It's got no information for this game. That is it's strange because it in, had it before. Na across the board. You broke it. Look, that they don't even have the lineup. They don't have now. That's what I'm saying. They don't have anything up. Click a uh, quick refresh on that. <laughs> I, I literally just opened the page. I know, but they, like they didn't even have the line loaded. The line's still not loaded. But the all right, line well, for this Vegas game is Vegas Insider is broken. Either way, earlier all the other lines are up. That's when I looked at it earlier. There were way more tickets coming in on Boise, and they had not moved the line. So I was very curious, like why why they haven't moved the line? What's going on? I think because of the talent, because of Boise coming down to Jacksonville, where it is known to be really muggy, really nasty. I think this is a significant advantage yeah. for Florida State. So my my definitive answer for I think Florida State wins. I think Florida State covers is because we live in this. God forsaken heat. It's like it's, you're walking around in a mouth. So, so yeah, you're the one. That's yeah. the, you're walking. I feel like I'm walking around in somebody's mouth. This is like the devil's asshole. Yeah. Okay. Just assume what that feels like. That's what we're in right now. Well, not today. Today it was pretty nice. We got a little rain here. Yeah. But but I'm I'm just I'm just certain it's going to be 110 degrees heat index with 100 percent humidity, 90 percent humidity, and they won't be able to breathe. And West Coast. Pacific Northwest, is that kind of considered that area? Mountainous region? Maybe no it's humidity. Not. Is it all prairies? It's all Yeah, it's, it's all dry, it, yeah. though. Coming down south, it's, it's just hard. Just like you bring southern woods up to the altitudes, we don't handle it well. Now, the other side of this is if Boise wins this, they could 100% go 12-0. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. I, I, I think the Mountain West has some teams that I like a lot, but, yeah, them going 12-0 and 0 is... Is, is more probable than not. Let's move on from that one. South Carolina, uh, this morning it was minus 8.5. Right now, South ten. Carolina is 10. It, it has jumped a bunch. Yes. Uh, against North Carolina, it's in Charlotte. The metrics have got South Carolina minus 10.5, right? And in my metrics, if you go sign up for our newsletter, every Thursday I'm going to email out the top 11 analytical sites that hit over 52% against the spread last year. So, and that that is for every game. That is 
it's going backwards. Yeah, they, this they might are. Be, this might be one of those things. So we watch this. You guys can't see what we're looking at, but we're going to describe it real quick. This is one of those situations where the money is going one way and the line is going the opposite way. Yes. 70, 60, sorry, 65% of the spread, the spread bets tickets. and 71% of the money is going on North Carolina, but the line's gone from seven and a half opening to 10. Yeah. So they are begging more people Keep to taking please bet North Carolina. on North Carolina. And I wouldn't bet one Buffalo penny on, on Mac Brown, on Mac Brown right this now. year, right now. Yeah, because this is uh, Vince Young ain't walking through that door, man. No, I mean this is, and on top of that, the I mean they've got ninety seven, ninety seven percent of the tickets are on the under. Now that doesn't surprise me. South Carolina is going to show up for defense. Yeah, but I don't the, know that North Carolina. Look at the going. line again. It's, it's moving the other. It's way. It's moving the other way. They're begging people to take the under. Yeah, I don't, they, I'm not. I, I'm. I don't either know. way, I, I'm it not would not. With that. It would not shock me if South Carolina absolutely beat the dog mess out of Mac Brown's team. Yeah, Scoring uh, 64 points. That's South Carolina's lot. defense is not to be fooled with. They're gonna be good. Yeah. North Carolina's not putting up 30. Yeah, which means they expect. South, South Carolina, Carolina to score up like 50? 40, 45, I guess. Something yeah, like that. you can't. That, that, I don't think that's happening either. Yeah. We'll see. All right, well, let's move. We're spending a long time on these. UCLA at Cincinnati. Cincy, a two and a half point favorite. This one is on Thursday night. It's the 7 p.m. Can't ESPN game. game. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. Chip Kelly's bunch. UCLA should be more developed, more experienced this year. Cincinnati Doral Thompson teams Robinson. Tough. Yeah. Um, Cincy, even at 11 and 2 last year, they were only number 50 in the SP. I know. I the, hate, they the, got no respect at the all. The numbers hated them. And I know. that's not a respect thing. That is I get, that is based purely on analytics. They got really, really they were led the nation in percentage on third and long. So anything past third and ten. I mean, it, they were unfreaking believable last year. Okay. And a lot of that is because they were really good. I like Luke Fickle. I like Luke Fickle like as well, but they position. did lose some When he guys. took over Ohio State, he was just out of his element, out of his league. This is his world right now, and he's doing really, really well. I am, I'm going to put a little bit on this game. I'm going to. Well, it's the first big game of the year. I'm not sitting at home watching nothing with nothing on it. I'm going to take UCLA on the money line. Well, it's nothing. I mean, it's small. Uh, it's tiny. It's like plus 115. Right? You're, not losing, like you're not losing money, though. Exactly. Where to go. So it's it, there it is. Right the first, yeah, first game up. It's plus one fifteen. Plus one fifteen. Yeah. So, but I, I would a hundred percent take that because I think UCLA in uh, year two under Chip Kelly will be yes. better. Yes. There's no purpose in laying the one ten to take two and a half. If you think UCLA is going to win, you got to assume they're going to win by the field goal. Exactly. So, so yeah, give the two and a half points back. Take some juice. Give with me, you. give me the plus one fifteen. How you feeling? I, don't know. I like Luke Fickle, but I like I like Chip Kelly. You know that I was yeah. I was I, I, I was in with him for a long time. Oh yeah, even in the NFL, man. It, I'm gonna sit back. I'm gonna enjoy this game. I'll figure that out later. <laughs> Duke against Alabama. It's in Atlanta. Thirty five point spread. This line opened at thirty. This, this is one of those games that's not really interesting, but Gary likes to talk about. Well, Alabama. here's here's the only thing that's interesting about it, right? Saban, 5, 6, and 1 against the spread as a favorite of 30 or more. Cutcliffe, 7, 0, oh, and 1 against the spread, and 7, and 1 straight up as an underdog in their last eight. That's over the last two seasons. So that does kind of. Now, the one loss. If that happens. The one, the one loss I'm, and the one I'm tie. Going, I'm going to be unbearable. Was to Clemson last year. So the, the tie against the spread was to Clemson. The one straight up loss was to Clemson. Alabama is more like Clemson than some of these other teams that they that they beat, right? But I know you will be unbearable. But I'm, I'm but gonna be hard to get along with. I thought I thought you might up. appreciate those numbers. I do seven, appreciate those numbers. Seven, now oh, I'm glad we one. talked about this game. Seven oh, Come on, one Cliff. against the spread, and seven and one straight up as an underdog in their last eight as an underdog. That's over the last two years. Quentin Harris is nothing to sneeze at, man. He was two and zero as a starter yeah. when Daniel Jones was no, out. He's he's had plenty of snaps, and Cutcliffe's going to have a quarterback ready. 
That, there's no question in my yeah. mind. It's hard for a school like that to lose an NFL quarterback. Well, and but, I mean, they they are also way down the totem pole as far as experience returning. Oh yeah. Oh no. So, they don't, yeah, they don't have they don't have a lot of guys coming back, but it's okay. But maybe that's Cutcliffe maybe is a is a really good coach. I don't give him the credit that he probably deserves when we're talking about really good coaches that just coach at smaller schools. And, yeah. and, and he deserves that. He deserves that recognition. I, if I had to roll with a bet, I'd, I'd absolutely take Duke plus three. Oh, no, no. I would absolutely take the point. Now, you know how I feel, though. All these yeah. big-time games where a big school plays a little school, I, I usually just take the points and, and hope that there's a chance that the big school just says, we're Yeah, done. we're good. We're done. That's a, it, Don't like, get somebody hurt. We're pulling everybody. Clemson and Georgia Tech, uh, I yeah. believe that, I mean, that's, what, 37 yeah, now? Yeah, it's, it's massive. And it, it opened at 33 and a half. Yeah. And it just keeps going up. The, the play on all of those usually is the first half line. If you can ever yeah. get stuff like that, that's that's really the play. Yeah. Is well, because the, the first half line out. is Clemson minus 23. Yeah. And for the Alabama game, it's Alabama minus twenty one. But that's so, like I said, I actually I would I would be okay playing those. Yeah. Because I think these schools get up and then they then they pull guys. Yeah. Exactly. All right, we got two more. Virginia Tech at Boston College. Boston College a four and a half point underdog. At home. Now by the advanced metrics that I've been talking about, again, go sign up for the newsletter. I send out the spreadsheet that goes over every Game for the weekend. I send it out Thursday morning. Um, by the advanced metrics, Boston College is actually favored in this game by a point at home. Fuente, kind of desperate for a win here. I know. This this is one of those situations where I, I really like both these and, guys. A and lot. for the so Steve Adagio, we love him, yeah. but they are, I mean, they've got to replace basically the <laughs> so, offensive line. So they gotta replace the defensive line. Like they've got they got a lot they got to replace. They should not but be they, in this game. They do get AJ Brown back. They they do get. I mean, they got a lot of guys that are playmakers that they've got. But it's the trenches where there's a now, problem. As was like, they shouldn't. The just talent gap is big. And that's that's kind of the thing, right? Like, how good is Virginia Tech? And not I, as good as they should be. Can I? Is that an appropriate answer? That's, that's fair. They should be competing for the ACC. And instead. They're trying to beat Virginia and still own the state. It is uh, They're still playing for state titles. Game one of the last ride for Bud Foster. We'll see what he's got up his I'm sleeve. I'm really hoping that he has a special year coming out. I'm I hoping hope so. him and Fuente can put something together that's special. You know how much I love Fuente, but last year hurt me, man. Would it would it surprise you at all if if BC wins this game? Oh, I, I don't even know that it upset me that bad, other than the fact that. If Boston College loses this game, I don't think it's a big deal. If Virginia Tech loses this game, I think it's a huge deal. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Even though it's a small point, a point spread. Fresno State at USC. This will be the last one. USC minus 13 and a half. Seemed like a massive number, right? And it, what, what is, what's our money looking like on here? Um, the question right now is, does USC new offensive coordinator Graham Harrell Put on a show with JT Daniels and that bunch. Let's see, money line a hundred percent on Fresno, uh, spread eighty two percent of the tickets on USC. So it opened at nine and a half and has jumped up to thirteen and a half. And I gotta tell you, I think there's a lot of people, there's a lot of smart guys that really think that Fresno has a shot here. And I just do not see it. I don't. I don't know that I'd call myself a smart guy. But not 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 like, just you. you need, but like neither other, would neither other, would anybody else. That other gamblers this, that man. I know that are really good at this. There's a there's a guy I'm buddies with, the Vol Colonel. Yeah. And and he does fantastic every football season, and he swears by Jeff Tedford. He swears that that but, Fresno is a live dog. This this that they this can is win it. This game. He could, well, so guys like him and I like we're the same in the sense of. I know Fresno lost so much. They have so, they're so inexperienced. They are back. number one twenty nine out of one thirty in returning experience. I get it, but when you have a head coach that's been doing it as long as he's been doing it, you don't really care about those things because you just assume the guy's taken over. They they're not freshmen. They just didn't play last year, but they've been in that system. They worked against the dudes that did play, 
and they're just going to move in, take those roles, and be fine. And if USC can't figure things out, I mean, it. if it's bad early, it's going to be bad late. Yeah. USC's best hope is get up by 15, 21 points first quarter and, and just don't let up. But if this game is a ball game at halftime, that crowd is going to turn on them. Yeah, no, I, think, I think you're right. That's going to happen. I think I would have to roll with USC right now. Give me all them points. I mean, I'm I'm not – I ain't betting it. I ain't betting it. It's not but, one of my gambling picks, but it'll be one that I have money on. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, it's one – yeah. That makes sense. All right, that's going to wrap up the big game previews and picks. Of course, make sure and go watch our gambling pick segment. We will actually give you – uh, how much like what money we're wagering on these? We'll explain all, how that's all going to work yeah. too, because it's all different this year as well. Go visit the uh, the football picks contest over on the website winningcureseverything.com. dot com. Enter in there. We got great prizes from Tunica, Mississippi. Make sure you check them out as well. Tunicatravel dot com. Ah, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. Welcome back, college football season. Go to winningcureseverything.com. Hit subscribe on YouTube. Hit subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, etc. Leave a nice review. Leave some comments. We'll see you guys. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com. Or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.